Welcome to the Eradicators, everyone. I am your host, the Eradicator, and in this video, we will be talking about Shadow, which is a cloud service offered by Blade, a startup company based in France. Now, for those who are not aware of what Shadow is, because their service has not been available everywhere in the world, for example, it is not available where I live, Shadow allows you to give any of your tech device, such as a PC, a phone, or a tablet, the power of a high-end gaming PC so that you can get to play your favorite video games at a high setting without having to actually possess a high-end PC. All of that through the magics of the internet. Their service was originally launched in 2015 and allowed its subscribers to get access to a GTX 980 and 8GB of RAM, which was very good back in those days, but not top-notch either. The hardware then got upgraded to what is currently available, a GTX 1080 and 12GB of RAM, which is sadly quite outdated in today's standards. And this is where the problem is. In a world in which tech is in a constant progression, if you are into this kind of business, you must always upgrade your hardware. And if this has a cost for you, uh, mere little individual gamers, imagine how it might be for a startup that aims at having hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Last year, their system was supposed to receive some much needed upgrades and offer two different kinds of tiers for their subscribers. For example, you had the Shadow Ultra with an RTX 2080 and 16GB of RAM, while Shadow Infinite would offer a Titan RTX and 32GB of RAM, which is definitely enough to run the most demanding games nowadays. But this configuration is still losing the battle against top tier gaming PCs, and we are once again back to where the original problem is, or at least we will once those upgrades will be available or maybe the question is if those upgrades become available because as I am writing these lines it appears that Blade the company behind Shadow is in serious financial trouble and is in dire need of liquidity so much so that they are looking for a buyer to take over the company or at least and this is what David Legrand of French gaming tech news outlets next impact is reporting and I'll put the links in the description down below so the main problem, according to the article, is that the much-needed upgrades, which were announced in 2019, still have not arrived because the company decided to change their servers. And when you are running such an operation that heavily relies on servers, there is a whole amount of logistics involved, including the conception of new server base, which the new server host did not have, meaning that they had to conceive them first, which took several months. And then there has been the pandemic, which has severely struck France, including several lockdowns, which made it very difficult for the company to reach their announced goals of 100,000 subscribers. Now, to be able to do that, the company heavily invested in international markets, especially South Korea, which is where they struck a deal with LG, enabling the latter to acquire some shares of the company. That operation, however, only rose 3 million euros, which was a far cry from the tens of millions of euros the company has risen over the past couple of years in order to secure its development. Feeling that the company was not taking the right direction, founder Emmanuel Freund abandoned ship along with some key personnel and was replaced by Siri Levin, a Breton entrepreneur who unfortunately didn't last very long and was quickly replaced himself by Mike Fisher, the current CEO. So you see there is also quite a little bit of instability here at the head of the company, so much so that a few months ago the chief tech officer or CTO Jean-Baptiste Kempf had to publicly communicate about how he believes in the product which is a sign again that things are not doing well for the company because normally you shouldn't have to reinsure investors and public stakeholders if your company is in a healthy position. Now that could be the very reason why Blade failed to raise the money that they hoped to do to raise the last time they were looking for investors by the end of last year. When asked about the situation, creative manager Victor Grimoire could only reply that the company will soon communicate to clarify the situation. He also added that the ongoing in procedures aims at finding a new owner for Shadow. It is also interesting to note that Mike Fisher, the CEO of Blade, has still not moved to Paris, which is perhaps another sign of what is perhaps to come. But please let me know in the comment section down below, are you using Shadow or have you heard of them? Is the idea of having a cloud computer appealing to you or would you rather invest in your own ring? I would like to know. 
And that marks the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. A big thanks also to everyone who have recently subscribed and joined our Patreon. The channel is really growing at a fast rate right now, and this is very encouraging. I also really appreciate the great feedback I've gotten from you guys. You guys are truly awesome and really inspire me to keep on going. Have a wonderful day, guys. This is the Eradicator, and I'll see you guys later. This video is brought to you by the people who support this channel on Patreon and via the join button as well. Supporters of the channel get access to lots of cool perks such as access to my private discord, your question answered in the show, you get to know when I'm going to play, and also you get to have a chance to influence the editorial line of the channel. Any help is appreciated, starts as just a dollar a month. Thank you very much for watching. This is the Eradicator, and I'll see you guys later.